What happens when the population of a city in Pakistan grows to be larger than all of the countries in Northern Europe put together? You get 10,000 tons of unprocessed garbage per day and shanty towns situated directly on landfills. Imagine a community of 2,000 people uh, living in a landfill site. The landfill sites are a great resource for food, uh, means for shelter, and a way for them to scavenge for recyclables that they can sell into the market. The garbage heaps are their kids' playground, where they go to school. Um, that is exactly where they socialize. No human waste controls, no running water, no electricity, no health management, there's nothing. And this garbage is set to fire. Uh, it's continuously producing smoke. When you're inhaling, continuously inhaling that smoke, and there are women scavenging through the garbage to sift through for even the smallest scraps of metal. They can't see that it's hot, and then they stick their hands in the garbage, and their hands get burned. A huge number of people have respiratory problems, lung cancer, digestive diseases from eating food that they've uh, you know, scavenged off of the landfill. These large populations living in burning garbage, it's an incubator for enormous problems, and it's being ignored for the most part. It's extremely powerful to experience that. We want to turn this wasteland into a homeland. A group of seven students from Rutgers and Princeton formulated a plan to turn waste into energy. We want to set up a small-scale co-op that basically uses a biodigester, which is an old technology that produces methane uh, from organic waste, to run a small-scale, um, almost 5 kVA generator and then produces electricity. The gas that's emitted from decomposition is captured, right? That can introduce electricity to power things like running pumps for water, a refrigerator for antibiotics a fan to keep the bugs off the, the doctor while he's trying to fix open wounds, running a computer or providing teachers better, uh, better resources for, for teaching, uh, running lights so that you can run the school at night. The electricity can extend their working hours. The work they're doing can be done much more efficiently because now they can employ machines. All these kind of resources that can become small business opportunities. And they can use the mulch from the methane production process uh, in agriculture, in, in a small organic farm where they can produce the food uh, to consume instead of scavenging for, for it uh, in the landfill site. From an engineering point of view, you can't simply solve a problem as an equation. You have to go beyond just the, the, the equipment and technology and, re and recognize that there's a balance of many social issues. By integrating what we uh, you know about technology with knowledge of the environment, sociology and so on, you can come up with a product uh, that can be applied. This is an interdisciplinary approach to the problem. Our team, for example, has a molecular biologist, um, a sociologist, uh, a, a grad student who's, uh, who's doing masters in finance, or electrical engineers, uh, computer scientists, and so on. And we were lucky to find each other in this environment and, and be able to push for these ideas. To have this collaboration and actually bring about, not with too complicated technology, you can come up with solutions that, that can bring about tangible difference in the lives of real people all over the globe.